In programming, a variable is the name of a location where a value can be stored. Variables can be used in many different commands and functions. Since InterSystems Object Script is a dynamically typed language, a given variable does not have a data type associated with it. To define a variable, use the set command to assign it a value. For example, to assign a value of 4 to the variable s, use the command set s equal to 4. Most commands and functions require that a variable be defined before it is used, such as the write command. As in some other programming languages, variables in object script are dynamically typed, meaning there are no specified data types. As a result, you can assign a numeric value to a variable and later assign the same variable a string value. InterSystems Iris data platform automatically converts or interprets the value of a variable based on the context in which it is used. Several kinds of variables are supported in object script, but the three we will focus on in this video are local variables, globals, and special variables. A local variable is stored within the current InterSystems Iris process and is only accessible to the process that created it. Once a process ends, all the processes' local variables are deleted. To define a local variable, follow these naming conventions. Use a valid identifier for the name, and make the first character either a letter or the percent character. For example, the identifier's pet name and percent pet name are valid, but asterisk pet name is not. In a local variable name, it is recommended that you do not use the name of an object script command like set or write, or SQL reserved word, such as index or execute. Globals are a special kind of variable, automatically stored within the InterSystems Iris database. They can be accessed by any process. A global persists after the end or termination of the process that created it until it is explicitly deleted. You can define a global in the same way you define a local variable, but the variable name always starts with a caret prefix, followed by either a letter or the percent character. Like local variables, globals are case sensitive. Object script includes some special variables, also called system variables, that are built into InterSystems Iris and used to make certain system information available to applications. Special variables begin with a dollar character prefix, and users cannot define any additional ones. For example, $horolog is a commonly used special variable that contains the current system date and time, stored in the InterSystems Iris storage format. This variable cannot be modified by users. Many special variables, like $horolog, are read only and cannot be defined using the set command. Others, such as $namespace, are read write and can be defined in this way. Dollar namespace stores the name of an existing namespace and can be used with the set command to change the current namespace. For a comprehensive look at special variables and their capabilities, refer to the object script reference on the documentation website. Variables can be used within expressions, which also contain operators, characters that specify an action to be performed. Expressions are classified by the types of operators they contain, like arithmetic, string, or relational and logical operators. Object script does not have conventional operator precedence rules. Instead, expressions are evaluated from left to right. An exception is that parentheses are considered during expression evaluation. Let's run through an example of an expression and see how precedence works. First, we will set the variable num to the arithmetic expression 4 plus 7, which evaluates to 11. Now, we'll enter times 3 after 4 plus 7. In typical mathematics, the multiplication would be processed first, leading to a value of 25. However, since there are no parentheses, object script evaluates left to right and first does the addition, making the new value of the num variable 33. To change the order of operations, let's add some parentheses around the multiplication. This forces what is in the parentheses, 7 times 3, to be evaluated first, making the result 25. To demonstrate how precedence works with logical operators and expressions, we'll first set x to 1 and y to 0. Then we'll write an if statement with the condition that returns the string this is true if x equals 1 or y equals 0. Since this statement is written without parentheses, it returns the string this is false. To properly perform this logical comparison, add parentheses to nest the equal operations. Now the expected result appears. This is true. Parentheses are required to enforce operator precedence, and they are also useful for code clarity. To learn more about the different kinds of variables and their behavior, as well as operator precedence, refer to the object script reference and visit the InterSystems documentation website.